The Steam Deck is approaching its two-year anniversary. It's hard to believe that the Steam Deck's been out for two years since it's graced our presence. And in those two years, so much has changed. My channel did exist before the Steam Deck, but it never really took off until I started covering the Steam Deck and making Steam Deck tutorials. And before all of that, I have to thank my audience and my colleagues because I wouldn't be here without any of y'all. Without my 11,800 subscribers, I wouldn't be here. And of course, I wouldn't be here without some of my colleagues. Shout out to the Nerd Nest Podcast for giving me advice every step of the way. And thank you all to the people who like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Without you, the YouTube algorithm wouldn't have blessed me at all. But aside from like, you know, my own personal growth, what's changed in these last two years? Well, there's a lot that's happened that's not directly related to the Steam Deck, but still. We're getting more and more PC ports coming to Steam. Games that we thought would never come to Steam are finally coming to Steam. More and more publishers and developers are releasing more games on PC, day one. The Steam Deck has also been an excellent boon for Linux gaming as a whole. Historically, gaming on Linux has always been sort of this white whale for the Linux community. And while Valve unveiled Proton in 2018, and yes, Proton was pretty good back then as well. It's grown substantially since it was released, and now I can confidently say that Linux can play like 90% of all Windows games. The only issue is that some of the world's biggest games like Fortnite and League of Legends and Valorant and like, I don't know, Destiny 2 do not work on Steam Deck. And by extension, they don't work on Linux either. So you still miss out on those major titles, unfortunately. But we live in a world where most of the critically acclaimed games aren't in fact live service titles, like Baldur's Gate 3. That works on Linux really well. The Steam Deck also inspired a number of different utilities. Probably the most infamous one is Emu Deck which helped to streamline the setup process of emulation on Steam Deck. It's not that setting up emulation was hard on Linux, it's just that it's so much easier now. It's so easy that I just tell people to use Emu Deck and that's it. I don't have to act as tech service, I can just redirect those people over to Emu Deck support. And of course, there's also Decky as well, a Steam Deck plugin framework that allows you to modify the game mode UI. Yes, the Steam Deck is quite feature rich, but there are some features that aren't available, some of which are contingent on outside sources. There are many, many more utilities, but these two could only flourish because of how open the Steam Deck is. The Steam Deck is a tinkerer's dream, and Valve doesn't really care what you do with it. Could you hack with it? Maybe. Could you install Windows instead? Sure. Valve doesn't mind. You can even use the Steam Deck to pilot drones during war. I've seen videos of Ukrainian soldiers doing so. I'd like to see you pilot a drone with a Nintendo Switch. And even in the firm realm of games, you can go beyond Steam. While yes, it's a lot easier to just buy all of your games on Steam, the fact is Valve isn't stopping you from installing other launchers like the Epic Game Store, or GOG, or even Battle.net if you want to get your WoW fix in. If you include emulation, the Steam Deck can play far more than what's available on Steam. And of course, you can also run random games from the internet, games that might be like just regular .exe files. But in addition to that, there's also the ease of use. The default game mode UI is very usable with a controller, and very easy to navigate, and very easy to understand as a current console gamer. You have access to almost every Steam feature available just through game mode itself. The only real caveat to the ease of use is the fact that just some games don't work on Steam Deck, whether it's compatibility issues or just anti-cheat issues. In some games, straight up require a keyboard and mouse to play instead of a controller so you have to map your own controls. The Steam Deck itself has also changed substantially within these two years. The interface is a lot more stable than it used to be. I remember the interface, like the first quarter of the Steam Deck's release, was quite unstable. And Steam Deck compatibility was pretty good, but nowhere near as good as it is now. Valve also added some pretty important features. Features that, honestly, we kind of take for granted now. Features like the refresh rate slider. You used to not be able to change the refresh rate, but now you can. They also added added per game performance settings, which wasn't a thing at launch. And of course, updates of Proton, driver updates, and many more different types of updates. With SteamOS 3.5 being the biggest update to date, the Steam Deck also released in one other region. That's right, they released in the Asian region. Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, and I think there's one other country that I can't think of. We'll talk about other regions further down the line. And of course, probably the most significant update the Steam Deck ever got was a new re-release, the Steam Deck OLED, which released in November of last year. It's truly an update in literally every facet. Better Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, better battery life and a more dense battery, and of course, most importantly, a better screen. 
a substantially better screen at that too. Honestly, if you were to buy a Steam Deck now, I would recommend getting the Steam Deck OLED at the very least. I've gotten a chance to review many different PC handhelds, and I still have my other PC handhelds, such as my ROG Ally and Lenovo Legion Go, but honestly my Steam Deck OLED is still my daily driver. The Steam Deck is Valve's biggest success. So now the big question is, what's next? And I'm not talking about the Steam Deck 2 or anything like that because that's still just pure speculation outside of the fact that Valve is going to make one eventually. Let's talk about SteamOS 3.6. SteamOS 3.6 is only available on the main branch, which is far more unstable than beta. For most people, I wouldn't recommend going to the main channel. I would recommend just waiting for 3.6 to hit the stable channel. But anyways, what does SteamOS 3.5 come with? Well, I am trying to find out some of the new features, but one of the more unique changes to SteamOS 3.6 is the change from swap files to ZRAM. This this is going to be a poorly explained version of ZRAM, but essentially ZRAM is compressing your RAM in real time, giving you more effective RAM. Bazite has already introduced this change if you're interested, but it is a Linux standard so it, it should be a net positive. But most of the changes are under the hood, you know, device drivers, graphics drivers, there's even a GameScape refactoring going on in the background. I'm not entirely sure what the end goal of this is, but it certainly is something to consider. SteamOS 3.6 is still on the horizon. Sure, it's not a huge cataclysmic change much like SteamOS 3.5 was, but it is a testament of Valve's commitment, and upgrading drivers to make games run faster and make the system run better is always a good thing. But there are some promises that Valve still has to keep, the first of which is SteamOS 3 getting a general release. In a prior video, I talked about Steam Machines 2, and many people expressed that they want to make their own Steam Machines 2, and they would need Valve to release SteamOS. And yes, installing Steam OS officially would be great, it'd be swell, but we haven't got any updates on this front and there's no telling if Valve will release it in a timely fashion. But if you want the Steam Deck experience without having to wait, there are a couple of different options. First and foremost is Bazite, which I've covered on this channel. Second is Chimera OS, which I haven't covered on this channel. And finally is Nobura, which I also haven't covered on this channel. But there is some news in regards to the GameScope refactoring. No one but the developers know what the GameScope refactoring is supposed to do, but the popular consensus seems to be that they want to make GameScope run better on devices outside of the Steam Deck. But again, this is just a theory and it's not even my own theory. It's a theory my Discord server came up with, and I mean the theory has some credence. It mentions something about being more generic, so to speak. So maybe there is hope for the general SteamOS release. Uh, so one of the questions that top voted right now is like, can you give us a more specific date about SteamOS 3 and when it'll be available for us to install on our hardware? I'm guessing by this you mean arbitrary hardware and not necessarily Steam Deck development hardware. Uh, and the answer to this is like, we don't have a solid date because we're actually still finishing things up on the OS front for Steam Deck's launch. Uh, and we, we imagine sometime after that we'll make SteamOS 3 for arbitrary uh, hardware available soon after yeah. that. Finally, we need to talk about Steam Deck in other regions. The Steam Deck was initially released in North America, and most of Europe, and a couple of Asian countries. But in most places, you can't buy a Steam Deck without importing it, which is quite expensive. And given that the RG Ally might be cheaper in those countries because you don't have to import it, it may be a better buy for them instead. You may be asking, what countries still don't have Steam Decks? Well, I'll tell you. Australia was one such country. Valve mentioned that they were trying to bring the Steam Deck to Australia and Japan in a dev stream. When will new countries be brought online? Meaning, when will Deck be available in more territories around the world? Um, we're basically finalizing plans on a bunch of um, other countries and territories. And although we don't have a lot to announce soon, um, there are some that are sort of ahead of others just logistically. Uh, in particular, we're working really hard right now on Japan and Australia. Before too long, we, th we think we'll have announcements to make, but we still don't really, uh, any, not, nothing concrete today. Well, Japan got their Steam Deck and they'd love it. But what about Australia? Well, there is no Steam Deck sellers in Australia, so there's that too. Valve also planned on bringing the Steam Deck to Russia. They had a distributor and everything there set up. But of course, the war happened, and honestly, we haven't heard anything about the Steam Deck being released in Russia. 
And yes, there are far more countries than just Australia and Russia not getting Steam decks, but they were the most notable ones because Valve seemed to have plans for releasing in Russia and Australia. We don't know what Valve is going to do. We don't know if Valve plans on releasing Steam decks in other regions, or if they're just going to wait to do that with the Steam Deck 2. All of my talk about the Steam Deck being affordable only really applies to the US. If you have to import your Steam Deck, you basically already lost the value proposition because importing fees are not cheap. You might be able to find an ROG ally for even cheaper in your own country instead. But anyways, I hope that Valve does end up releasing the Steam Deck in more regions, but I understand that there's a lot of red tape involved with releasing things in other regions. You gotta get licensed and all that stuff. All we can do is hope for the best. So there we have it, two years of Steam Deck. There's still a lot the Steam Deck needs to do, but there's a lot that's been accomplished within these two years. And I hope we can keep Steam Decking for a long time. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.